Hey everyone, and welcome to the fourth episode of my Pokemath series, where I'll be making short videos on some of the maths behind Pokemon game mechanics. In this episode, we'll be dealing with the sleep and confusion statuses in Generation 1. It might seem a bit weird to single these two status conditions out, but they have a few things in common. And also it was requested. Confusion and sleep are the two status conditions that the user will eventually snap out of without any trainer involvement. For example, a paralyzed Pokemon will be paralyzed forever, missing 25% of their turns for 100 years, or until the trainer decides to use a full heal, full restore, paralyze heal, or takes them to a Pokemon Center. A sleeping Pokemon, however, will wake itself up after a certain number of turns, needing no action from the trainer, and the same with confusion. Obviously the trainer can use an item to speed up the process rather than waiting, but who uses items anymore, honestly? This is the age of itemless Pokemon challenge runs. Okay, so let's have a look at sleep first. The moves that cause sleep and their respective accuracies are as follows. With the exception of Spore, these moves are pretty inaccurate, mainly because sleep is so busted in Generation 1. Reducing the accuracy of these moves was the least Game Freak could do. So why is sleep so broken? Sleep can last anywhere from 1 to 7 turns, and when a Pokemon is asleep, they're unable to attack. And unlike with Generation 2 onwards, you also miss the turn when you wake up. So if you outspeed and consistently land sleep moves, the opponent will never be able to attack back. When a sleep move lands, a random number from 1 to 7 is generated, and that's the number of turns the opponent will be asleep for. If you roll a 7, that Pokemon is staying asleep for 7 turns, and outside of using an item or a Pokemon Center, nothing will change that. As a child I thought spamming B would help wake my Pokemon up or screaming at the Game Boy, but nope, your fate is decided as soon as the move lands. Also fun to note is that it's a legitimate random number. It's equally likely to be any of the options, meaning it's equally likely to be a 1 turn sleep as it is a 7 turn sleep. I refused to believe that so put it to the test, and sure enough after 50 spores and resets I got a little 1, a 2, a 1, 2, 3, a 5, 2, 2, or 7, 5, 7, 6, 7, 7, 7, 7. Monica might have been a bit ambitious with all those 7s, but after 50 attempts the splits across the options were pretty even. And I did the same test with Sing and got similar results. The strength of the sleep doesn't vary with the type of sleep move that's used. The sleep counter only decreases if the sleeping Pokemon attempts to attack. If we switch Pokemon, or use an item like a potion, the sleep counter doesn't decrease. So if your plan is to stall out the enemy with potions as you wait for your sleeping Pokemon to wake up, good luck, you'll be waiting forever. And if the counter is now zero, the Pokemon wakes up. And so on a one turn sleep, we land the sleep move, the enemy immediately wakes up and misses their go. And as a last note about sleep, we can put ourselves to sleep with the move rest, although the counter is always set to two in that case so a Pokemon using Rest will always wake up on the second turn after using the move. Okay, let's have a look at Confusion. Unlike Sleep, Confusion is a volatile status condition, which means we don't get a fancy icon telling us our Pokemon is suffering from it, and also it doesn't persist across switches or exiting a battle. The moves that cause Confusion are as follows. Note the Confusion status is a secondary effect of Confusion and Psybeam. The accuracy for those attacks to hit is 100%, but the chance to confuse the target is 10%. Confusion works similarly to sleep, in that when a Pokemon gets inflicted with it, the random counter number is generated, and there's no wishing it away. It will last until the counter hits zero. Whereas sleep lasts from 1 to 7 turns, confusion lasts from 2 to 5. Like the sleep counter, the confusion counter will only decrease if the confused Pokemon attempts to attack. So again, using an item would not reduce the counter. The confusion counter has an additional caveat, in that it will not decrease if the confused Pokemon is asleep, frozen, suffers a flinch, or is recharging after using Hyper Beam. So if the Pokemon is asleep and confused, the confusion counter won't start ticking down until it wakes up. Each turn a Pokemon is confused, they have a 50% chance to use their selected attack, and a 50% chance to smash themselves in the face. The damage that is done to yourself is a base 40 power, typeless physical attack, and uses the confused Pokemon's attack and defense stats. So this is a big concern for glass cannons or getting confused after you've boosted your own attack with Swords Dance. For self-inflicted confusion damage, we only use the first part of the damage equation, as it's typeless so we don't have stab or type effectiveness, and also the random element is removed. So using an example of this level 100 Lapras, 
we should be doing 37 damage every time we hurt ourselves in Confusion. And as we can see, that's indeed the case. Confusion damage can't critically hit, and also it can't miss. Another difference between Sleep and Confusion is that a Pokemon doesn't miss a turn when snapping out of Confusion, allowing them to attack on the same turn they regain sanity. Now we have the basics down, let's get into some probabilities. The question that inspired this episode was from my mate Teo at RBY Pokemon Challenges. He was doing a 0 DVs, no TMs, Lapras solo run, and was wondering what's more likely to keep a Pokemon inactive for 3 turns. His choices were Sing or Confuse Ray, so let's check them out. To make our lives easier, let's make some assumptions. We're going to assume that we're slower than the enemy, we can survive 2 hits from them, and it'll take 3 hits from us to knock them out. So they need to be immobilized for 3 turns as we get our attacks in, after we've put them to sleep or confuse them. So for the Sing case, it's incredibly inaccurate so we start off with a 55% chance to land the sleep. To get our 3 damaging moves off we need the enemy to stay asleep for at least 3 turns. As we hit, we put them to sleep. They sleep for 1 turn, we hit them. They sleep for another turn, we hit them. They sleep for a 3rd turn, we win. So we need our random number to be 3 or above, giving us a 5 out of 7 chance to get what we want. If we rolled a 1 or a 2, the enemy would wake up, and before we could land sleep again they'd finish us off the next turn. So the probability of getting the win using Sing would be 0.55 times 5 over 7, which is 39.3%. Now for Confuse Ray. It's 100% accurate, so ignoring a Gen 1 miss we're guaranteed to land the Confusion. To get our 3 hits off, we need the enemy to stay confused for at least 4 turns. If we rolled a 3, they would snap out on the start of their 3rd turn and finish us off because you don't miss the turn, you snap out of confusion. So we have a 2 out of 4 chance to get the roll we want, either a 4 or a 5. But then we have an additional probability to consider. Unlike with sleep, confusion's not a guarantee for the opponent to miss their turn, so for each of the 3 turns where we'll be dealing damage, we need the enemy to hit themselves in confusion each time. So we have 100% to land, and then 2 out of 4 to get the roll, and then 50% times 50% times 50% for the three confusion flips, giving us a measly 6.25% chance. To give Confuse Ray a slightly better chance, let's say confusion damage from two self hits is the same as one of our attacks. So we only need to hit them twice, as long as they hit themselves twice too. So they can be confused for one less turn now, and only need to hit themselves twice instead of three times. That gives us 100% times 3 out of 4 times 50% times 50% which gives us 18.75%. That's given us much better odds, but Confuse Ray is still less than half as likely as Sing's 39.3%. Visualising the best and worst sleep and confusion moves, and the probability of making the opponent skip a certain number of turns, we can see the following. So in conclusion, if you're resetting for perfect luck, don't be fooled by 100% accurate Confuse Rays when you have a sleep move on your side. Even one as inaccurate as Sing can double your odds. The worst sleep move is miles better than the best confusion move at getting your opponent to miss turns. Teo made the right decision in his run, as he used Sing as opposed to Confuse Ray, and eventually got the win. To give confusion a bit of credit before we end, it can be paired with other status conditions which sleep can't. Paralysis and confusion is a great combo that makes it so the opponent has a 25% chance to miss a turn due to being fully paralysed. Or if they didn't get fully paralysed, but instead hurt themselves in confusion, that's 37.5%, which gives them a total chance of 62.5% to miss their turn. Thanks for watching. I hope you learnt something because I definitely did. If there's any game mechanics you'd like me to do an episode on, then please let me know. Next time, I'll be looking at stat modifications and the one and only Badge Boost Glitch. See ya!